One of these men is a veteran of hundreds of barroom brawls in TV Western. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Gabori. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Gabori. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Gabori. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Fred Gabori and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, which is brought to you this week by Arid Whirlin, the new three-ingredient roll-on deodorant. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. Oh. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> My name is Tom Poston. I don't quite know what that reaction was to your name, Polly. I don't but either. <laughs> you have to find out from Kitty later. Got a confusion now, <laughs> being Elizabeth in first impressions as she is, sitting next to uh, FDR and Sunrise at Campobello. And Tom, what's the name of your off-Broadway show again? Come play with me. <laughs> I thought I remembered it that way. It's a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no a... tragedies here tonight. Let's it's... find out about this affidavit. If you'll follow along with me, please, as I read it. I, Fred Gabori, hold a master's degree in chemical engineering from the University of Southern California. I use my knowledge of chemistry to manufacture the breakaway furniture and glassware used in barroom brawl scenes in Western movies. My company provides such properties to some 32 different TV Western series. I also appear as a stuntman in many of these fight scenes. I have been stabbed with my own rubber knives, crashed through my own fake glass windows and have been bashed on the head by dozens of the phony bottles, chairs, and tables which I manufacture. Signed, Fred Gabori. So we start off tonight's panel with three gentlemen who all claim to be Fred Gabori, TV stuntman, movie stuntman, and manufacturer of uh, breakaway furniture, etc. We start this questioning with... Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. And number one, what was the toughest stunt you ever did? Well, it was a horse drag where I couldn't trip the release. A horse what? A drag. I was pulled along. I couldn't get off. Stirrup, that's right. What was number two, uh, what was the um, toughest thing you ever did? I think the toughest thing I ever did was get the job. <laughs> Here or on, the, on a television western? Here. <laughs> Number three, it says that there are 32 different Western series. Is that true? That's right. But that's appalling. Oh. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. <laughs> Number one, how do they get the arrows to come out the other end when they shoot them like that, you well, know, out the back? I'll be uh, disillusioning a lot of children, I think, but they are cut in half and affixed to a plate, and the plate is uh, under the shirt with the back end of the out arrow sticking shot. out in the back. The other fellow, the, the man himself, releases the arrow. Oh, uh, well, in that case, they usually they put a board in, in the back and shoot a into board? the board. Tom? Uh, thank you, Bart. Number three, what, uh, what, what are your phony whiskey bottles made of? Low pressure, polystyrene. Pardon me? Low pressure, polystyrene. What did I steer? <laughs> what about Paola? How about a little high-pressure Polly Burger? <laughs> the only kind there is. That's the only kind there is. <clears throat> Number two, did you ever work on gun smoke? Yes, I have. Could you tell us which leg of Chester's is stiff? Hmm. <laughs> the left one. Number one, which, which leg of Chester? Did you ever work on gun smoke? Number one. Uh, only on a second unit. He wasn't even there. I see. Now Once I a wise guy, know. always one. Number three, uh, <laughs> Mr. Dillon. I mean, Polly Bergen. Mr. Dillon. It was the left or the right foot. I can't remember now which one he, well, anyway. Um, number three, have you ever worked on Wyatt Earp? Yes. Well, would you make one of the phony things real next time? Because they're on opposite us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who, is, who is the star of, uh, of uh, Wyatt Earp? Hugh O'Brien. Uh, where is that filmed? 
On the West Coast. Number one, where on the West Coast? I think that's at Review. Uh, number two, where is Review? Uh, out in San Fernando Valley. Number one, where is Review? San Fernando Valley. Ralph? Number one, where's Gower Gulch? Well, it's right alongside uh, the, what's now the Desilu lot. Number two, where's Gower Gulch? As I recall, Gower Gulch is on Gower Street, uh, somewhere in Hollywood by Hollywood Boulevard. Number three, where's Gower Gulch? I'd say it's in Hollywood. In Hollywood, but where in Hollywood? <laughs> uh, you got me. I'll give up. Number one, uh, have you ever worked with John Wayne? <clears throat> no. Never. Have you number two? No. Have you number three? Never. No. <laughs> That's it, pal. It's time to vote. Far. And without consultation, will you... Yes? Which one said review? I can't tell you. I now. don't know which one ask I asked. To consult which with the panel because I'm going to say to you now, without consultation, will you mark your ballot <laughs> and select by the hat number one, number two, or number three? Remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay. All marked, panel? Whom did you vote, Polly? I voted for number one because I think he was the one that said review production, so probably number two and number three would have said it if I'd asked them, but I didn't. But I asked them where it was, and they said San Fernando, and it should have been closer than that, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you, just left, you just left me in the bottom of Gower Gulch, if you pardon my saying so. Ralph? Uh, number one, he was fairly close with uh, Gower Gulch, and he was, uh, seemed to have some technical knowledge about the second <laughs> unit, the horse drag, and so on, I think. I think it's number one. And you got a great title for a new Western series. <laughs> 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 right. Kitty? Uh, number one, his answer sounded more technical, and also he has the complexion of a man who has been knocked about, kicked around, <laughs> hit over the head with balls. <laughs> and Tom Poston, your vote, please. I voted for number one, Bud, as well as the rest of the panel, because I listened to what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've shown by unanimous vote on our panel, at least. They've all picked number one. I don't know which one or ones you may have picked at home. We'll find out right now whether you're right or we're right as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real movie TV stuntman and also the manufacturer of all of the breakaway material in furniture, chairs, and bottles, etc. Now, I'm going to ask uh, you three gentlemen, if you will, please, to all stand up. All three of you. Now that you're all standing, will the real Fred Gabori remain standing? A sure cure for dandruff. <laughs> Number one, you tell us who you really are and what you do. You've garnered all the votes. I'm uh, Dick Gordon, assistant sales manager for the American Express credit card. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you look like you've been hit on the head so many times. <laughs> Number three, what about you, sir? My name is Big Bill Lynn. I am the New York representative for Darius Media Service Incorporated. Thank you very much. Sir. Well, our panel was 100% wrong in this first round tonight. That means, of course, that $250 each, four incorrect votes for a total of $1,000. A profitable evening, gentlemen, I think you'd call it. Certainly a pleasant one for us. It was nice having you with us. On your way out, you will find that there is a year's supply of Rise Instant Shave for each of you. Congratulations from Arid. Good night and the best of good luck. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gertrude DeWitt. What is your name, please? My name is Gertrude DeWitt. What is your name, please? My name is Gertrude DeWitt. Again, follow along with your copies of an affidavit, if you will, please, panel. I, Gertrude DeWitt, am a taxi cab driver in New York City. I got my license in 1930 and hacked until 1940. That year, I went to England. 
I enlisted in the British Women's Army and became a sergeant teaching automobile driving and mechanics. One of the pupils at the school where I taught was Princess Elizabeth, now Queen of England. When the United States entered the war, I transferred to the WAX as a staff driver. After the war, I returned to New York and have been driving a taxicab ever since. Signed, Gertrude DeWitt. Here we have three ladies all claiming to be Gertrude DeWitt, New York City cab driver, and we begin this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, who are the best tippers, men or women? Men when they're with women. Figured. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number two, it said that you were in England for quite a while. What do they call the hood of a car in England? A bonnet. Uh, number one, uh, how much does it cost to carry a trunk in a cab? What do you charge for a trunk? Well, I don't think that uh, we don't carry trunks. Uh, number two, uh, there's usually a sign on the back of a cab saying how much you charge if, if there's a trunk in your car. With no trunks allowed, hand baggage. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, number one, how much you charge for a handbag? <laughs> no charge. No charge. Number three, where is Pier 96, besides being next to 97? <laughs> 54th Street. 54th Street. Ralph Bellamy. Number three, I'll continue. How much to carry a trunk? Uh, trunks are no longer permitted to be carried by cabs. When the sign was up there, how much was it? 50 cents. Uh, how you many... finally got the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, how many uh, taxi cab drivers in New York City? Uh, in the vicinity of 15,000. Uh, Number two, would you say this is right? No, 50,000. 50,000. Number three, how many? 50,000. 50,000. Yes. Number one, what does uh, ITOA mean? Independent Taxi Owners association uh kitty number two i think taxi drivers are perhaps the most helpful race of people in new york city what is the greatest service you've ever performed for a passenger well, i've performed several of them and i just couldn't relate you on couldn't just one. one it takes too long <laughs> number three uh, was her majesty a good driver yes very good could you number one could you teach me to park in a small place <laughs> yes backwards not forward, you'd have to park backwards. In the <laughs> I never seem to make it. Um, number two, what hours do you work? I work four to four. Four to four. Uh, number three, can you tell me what's the best way to get from Times Square to Idlewild? By taxi cab. Down <laughs> folks, <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> wonderful. Number three, what branch of the uh, British Women's Army were you in during the war? Bats. That was the British Army Territorial Service. Oh, bats, huh? Yes. Where were you stationed? In a belfry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, could you tell us, please, what was a pound worth in British currency during wartime? It was uh, between four fifty and five dollars. Number three, could you tell us what is a pound to an American taxicab driver? What is a pound? Number one, what is a pound to an American cab driver? Sixteen ounces. <laughs> what a cop does to a beat, probably. Sixteen ounces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once again, it's time to vote, panel. So without consultation, will you mark your ballots again? And this time, as before, select number one, number two, or number three. Okay, panel, all set? You mark your ballots? Polly, for whom this time? Well, I'm going to prove something, that cab drivers uh, shouldn't talk so much. Because I vote for number one because there was a woman cab driver who picked up my sister-in-law and brother-in-law on Easter, and she told them she was going to be a contestant on To Tell the Truth tonight, and they said she was blonde. Oh, when was Easter this happened? Yes, I think. Uh-huh. And All so right. number one is the only blonde, so I'm That's voting for her. At least the reason. Okay, Ralph? Number one, I was, um, I must say, I vacillated a lot, but uh, number one was the only one anywhere near the actual number of cab drivers, which I understand is between 12 and 15,000. The other two said 50,000. Actually, it is 50. I misunderstood you. I thought you said taxi cabs, which are 15,000. Oh, well, you gave <laughs> Well, I, I think, I think, I, the right the I think the questioning period is over. I'll stay with number one. I think, 
I'll stay with uh, number one. I think that, uh, uh, yes, Kitty, your well, vote, I voted please. for number two because I didn't believe number one who said 15,000. I thought number two had more of the right answers. Uh -huh. So it turns out you got the right one, Tommy, for the wrong oh, reason. Okay. Tom? I voted for number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost afraid to say why now. Uh, uh, the, the pound question is... Uh, a pound is a very specific piece of information that uh, New York taxi drivers have at their money fingertip, and the other two didn't know, so I figured maybe she would, and that's why I voted for her. Okay. All right, there we have it now. Let's see whether we're right or wrong. And who is and who isn't, as we find out which one of these three ladies is the real New York City cab driver. So will the real Gertrude DeWitt please stand up? Question in just a minute, Polly. We find out about the others first. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? I'm Sheila Adams, and I own and operate the Chestnut Bay School for Riding, and I specialize in horsemanship. Thank you. <laughs> and number three, what about you? I am Mary McGee. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm a fashion and photographer's model here in New York. Thank you. Now, you have a question, Polly? Bud, yes? I think that in all fairness, I really should have disqualified myself. So I, I think that she, that the one vote should go somewhere else because well, they did tell me it was a blonde cab driver. They did. Yeah. You want to disqualify? That would be then an incorrect vote, right? Yes. Okay. We'll call that an incorrect vote. Okay. Then, if you want to play it that way, I think it's very honest and very fair. Thank you very much, Paul. Well, I think it's Quickly. Not I'm sorry, our time is running short. That means there were three incorrect votes at $250 each from Arid for a total of $750. Ladies, thank you very much for being with us. On your way out, you'll find uh, a large gift package of all of Carter's fine products. Good night and good luck. Take driving. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Victor Tidlaka. What is your name, please? My name is Victor Titlaka. What is your name, please? My name is Victor Titlaka. Again, your attention, please, panel, to your copies of this affidavit. I, Victor Titlaka, am a captain in the United States Coast Guard. My present job is a direct result of the sinking of the British liner Titanic by an iceberg in 1912. Two years later, the International Ice Patrol was formed and has been in existence ever since. Based in Argentia, Newfoundland, United States Coast Guard cutters and planes patrol the North Atlantic seaways from February through July each year, warning ships of the presence of icebergs and floating field ice. I am the commander of the International Ice Patrol. Signed, Victor Tidlaka. Here now we have three distinguished gentlemen all claiming to be Victor Tidlaka, commander of the International Ice Patrol. We start this round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. Number one, was Andy Griffith ever in the Coast Guard in any sense? Well, he was in TARS and SPARS during the war, if that's what you mean. He was. Number two, do you have any other association with Andy Griffith in the Coast Guard? I, I don't remember. I, I, don't, I don't know. I Number don't three, know. I'll just uh, do this quickly and get it over with. Would you say that Andy He Griffith was associated with the Coast Guard. In what way that you know of, sir? In the picture. Thank you. Uh, Number three, presumably you know where the ice is in this hemisphere in the Atlantic between February and July. I wonder if you could tell me how I could get a little in here. This is warmest. <laughs> <laughs> It. Molly? <laughs> Mine does. I took a swallow, but it had soap in it. A soap? I swear. Uh, number one, what year was Sondrachinsky the commander of the International Ice Patrol? Ooh, never heard of it. Uh, number, uh, number two, do you know what year Sondrachinsky was the commander of the International Ice Patrol? Uh, what's the name again? Sondrachinsky. Sondrachinsky? I don't think, I don't uh, think he was. Uh, n number one, <laughs> uh, no, no, I already asked you. You don't have to answer again. Um, what, what percentage of an iceberg is, a, is below the water? It's according to its density. It goes from even as much, if it's very dense, 
the uh, complex is as much as 90% below the water, but it's normally about 75% below water. I see. Num Ralph? Number one, where's the Coast Guard Academy? New London. Uh, on what river is it? Thames. Number two, how do you pronounce that river? Thames River. Number Thames. three, how do you say it? Thames. Uh, number one, uh, on Long Island, what's the, where is the uh, Coast Guard training base? Number two. Well, during the war, it was at Manhattan Beach. Um, number three, under what government agency is the Coast Guard? United States Treasury. And uh, number one. Did he? And number three, what is geo is RM geodetics? What? Geodetics. I didn't get your verbs. What are, well, my <laughs> verbs is all mixed up. <laughs> is it called is geodetics or are geodetics? What geodetics is, is the uh, surveys of the seas. Uh-huh. Number two, do you ever get seasick? I did when I first joined the Coast Guard, but I rarely do now. You uh, don't anymore. What do you take when you get seasick? I get just terribly seasick. Well, they have some pills for it now. They but, do. Uh, Number one, who's the Secretary of the Treasury? Secretary of the Treasury is Anderson. That's it. Time once again to vote. So will you please mark your ballots again, panel, and in so doing, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Uh, All set, panel? Oh, did, did you hear what Tom no, said? No, what did Tom say? He said, I never saw three shiftier military men in my life. <laughs> All right, the first shift. Polly, for whom uh, do you vote? I voted for the, the least shiftiest, I think. <laughs> Num number three. Uh, I don't know whether you pronounce it Thames or Sam. I think it's Thames. 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 I always heard it. And anyway, he seemed to be awfully bright, and, and so I voted for him. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm sorry, the for other two were too, but I mean, on specific answers to questions. <laughs> that, You're getting shifty yourself. You? <laughs> I think I better shut up while, I'm, mean while getting, I'm behind. Ralph. <laughs> Okay, for those who are listening, we're talking about not the Thames in England, which is Thames, but over here is the one that's pronounced Thames. Is that the one you made? I thought so. They all well, said We might get Thames. mail saying it is Thames. Ralph, your vote, please. I'm voting for number two, uh, principally on the basis of his knowledge of the Manhattan Beach training base during the war on Long Island. Mm -hmm. Kitty, your vote. I'm voting for number three. I like the way he corrected my grammar, although I still don't know whether it's am or is. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom. I, I voted for number three, too, but... <laughs> Three, two. Three, two. <laughs> it's five, and that means you. <laughs> All right, there we have it. Now the way we made up our minds, and if you're playing, let's check on you, too, now, as we discover which of these gentlemen is the real commander of the International Ice Patrol. So will the real Victor Titlaka please stand up? Thank you. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is R. Edwards. I were, I'm a supervisor of the Western Union. <laughs> and number three, what about you, sir? <clears throat> My name is Clayton Chandler. I'm an educational consultant with the Alexander Hamilton Institute in New York. Thank you, sir. Tonight. There were three incorrect votes at $250 each again for a total of $750 from Arid. And gentlemen, on your way out, you'll find a year's supply of instant lather. Rise instant lather for each of you. May I thank you for being with us. Hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed having you here. Good night and good luck. Well, uh, th th those is, uh, that are the, uh, the <laughs> geodetics for tonight, panel. So I guess that's all we have time for, except good night. Good night, good night. Good night. This is Bud Collier saying good night from Arid Horlin and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Hudson Bill Cogman production, association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen Dog by Wilma.